What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button. Hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content that we have coming out. And with this video, we are jumping back into the Reckoning War with Fantastic Four issue number 41. Now if you didn't catch the Reckoning War Alpha, if you have not been keeping up with this Fantastic Four event, be sure to check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It is going to get you completely caught up on everything going on with this story and right from the start this series this story has been absolute chaos with the reckoning war breaking out all over the universe our Fantastic Four are spreading out, trying to do everything they can to stop this reckoning before it takes out everything. But one of the most important parts of this story, it takes place at the end. It takes place with Silver Surfer, Thor, and Asgard. Now be sure to buy the comic, support the industry, and with that being said, oh, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we continue on with the reckoning, War, we are picking up on planet T37X, the homeworld to the almighty Watchers. And Yuatu, he has called everybody here, bringing everybody home, letting them know that the Reckoning War is upon them. The one exception for them breaking their oath has finally arrived. It is time for the Watchers to go to war, letting them all know that he has had Nick Fury going around the universe trying to track down whoever gave the Katati the weaponry that was essentially Watcher technology, trying to figure out who was responsible. That is what brought them to Wraith. That is what brought them to the Prosilicans, the race that became the Reckoning, the race that caused the conflict that took out nine-tenths of the universe. And with their return, for the sake that all that is, that they have to break their oath, and it is time for them to go to war. And this is where we see his father stand up, saying that he represents the entire tribunal when he says what he is about to say. And that is no. That they will not repeat the mistakes that they have made in the past. That they will not interfere, regardless of the exception that they made. They are going to stay out of this regardless. And if he is forced to take action, the only action that he is going to be taking is imprisoning his son. He does this to prevent him from interfering any further than he already has. With him pleading with his father, saying that if we don't do something now, there will be nothing that can stop them. And that's what takes us to the Shi'ar Empire. And right now, Rapture and her forces, they are coming down and they are killing anything in their path. Their main goal is the Mikran Crystal, because this is a nexus of all reality. If they get their hands on it, if they are able to manipulate it, it could cause unknown chaos. Chaos. It could very likely implode the entire universe in on itself. With Mr. Fantastic doing what he can to hold the army off, this is where we see the Fang jump in and go toe to toe with Rapture. Because Rapture is supposed to be the individual that kills the Fang. He saw this in a vision. He was given a glimpse of his death and it is at her hand. And so as the two battle, as the two of them clash together, we see Rapture get the upper hand on the Fang. This is where he recognizes and sees what he saw in his vision. This is the moment. This is when the Fang dies putting up his hand as she comes down to smite him. We see the thing, his hand, it is still in one piece. Believing that it should have been cut right in half. Not understanding what happened until he recognizes the ring on his finger. With it being able to absorb her hit, the ring shatters into pieces. Rapture recognizing that this was just dumb luck. She goes to make her swing again. The thing trying to get out of the way. The others trying to reach him in time. But Rapture's sword comes down and we see the thing he is split almost in half. Mr. Fantastic, he sees this and he rushes over, grabbing the thing and wrapping him up. Mr. Fantastic is the only thing keeping the thing in one piece. 
And so with the Fantastic Four team relatively defeated, Rapture and the others, they go for the crystal because that was their main goal. That was their objective all along and they are going to no longer mess around with all of these mortals. And so Rapture and her brother heading over to the crystal, they concentrate, they work together and the three, they disappear. The crystal now gone and the both of them as well. And that is what's going to take us to the Human Torch. Picking us up on Spire, they are currently going against Annihilation Wave. And the only thing stopping an Annihilation Wave from taking this planet over is the Unparalleled. Unfortunately for them, they are not holding out very well. This invasion has overwhelmed them and it will take a miracle for them to get through this. And in the midst of all the chaos, we see Anahylus. He is currently fighting against Sky because Anahylus, he has come here for the cosmic rays. These people, they are soaked in it. And so this is just a feeding frenzy. But this is when that miracle, it begins to arrive with everyone looking up to the sky and what appears to be a third sun showing up on the horizon. But this sun, it is getting closer and closer, coming in at incredible speeds. It breaks straight through the armada taking out all the ships in its path making its way to the land making its way to the surface of this planet this burning ball of fury is none other than the human torch coming in to save the day he grabs a hold of anahylus and he takes him for a ride. And though Anahylus tries to use the full extent of his abilities against the Human Torch, Johnny, he has leveled up 10 times since the last time they saw one another. He has become as strong as a freaking star. And we see how little he is compared to Johnny. Taking out the Cosmic Control Rod, this makes him essentially nothing. With Johnny telling him that he gets one last word, that if he continues on this path, he will burn him right here right now and turn him straight to ash begging Johnny for some kind of mercy he tells him that he will grant it but all of the ships that he brought here they are getting left behind not questioning this one bit we see him make his leave and Johnny comes down to the people letting the overseer know that he came here for the cosmic rays he came here to take what you guys are soaked in but it's also much bigger than that this was all a distraction because right now the universe is waging a war the reckoning war is now upon everybody and so Johnny he didn't come here just to save these people he came here to ask them for help and now having the ships to take an entire armada wherever they need to go he is asking this people he is asking the unparalleled if they will fight by his side in the reckoning war and while Johnny is giving the speech looking around he sees this sky she has a new soul band and this you can feel it like it just wrenches his heart like what's a guy to say but the truth is is that her soul band it is connected to citadel she had been intended for him before they had ever met and so when she came back it was only natural for her to get back into the rhythm of things and that meant getting back with citadel now of course johnny he has to put this to the side this is something that he can't just he can't deal with it right now he's got enough to worry about and more importantly there is a universal civil war currently going on and with the forces now joining Johnny, we pick up in Asgard. Because all of the Heralds of Galactus, they have been called here. And they have been called here for one purpose. That is the resurrection of Galactus. None of them have this control. None of them understand really what is going on until Silver Surfer arrives. Letting Thor know that if you were ever a Herald, even for a split second, you are being called to... To his resurrection with Thor vowing that after this compulsion has worn off that he will take down Galactus and he will ensure that it is never possible for his resurrection again but Silver Surfer lets Thor know that this it's not in service of Galactus the universe itself requires that we bring Galactus back 
And so as the Heralds are working to resurrect Galactus, we see from Asgard, the Destroyer, with it one time serving as a Herald to Galactus. It is making its way straight to the corpse of Galactus itself. Not really sure what it is doing until it begins to open up. As it begins to open up, it becomes one with Galactus. With the two of them growing together, they become something new. No longer the Devourer. No longer the Destroyer. There is only one name for what rises before them. That name is the Destruction. And Silver Surfer alone, he possesses the one thing that can draw its attention. Stored within the dimensional fold, of his gleaming board, he pulls out the ultimate nullifier, telling the destruction that if he wants this prize, he must chase down the Silver Surfer, flying farther and faster than he ever has before, making sure the destruction stays hot on his tail. And though he may loathe being the herald of this monster, he has no choice. Because for eternity to survive, he must lead the destruction directly into the reckoning. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. You know, it was a relatively fun issue, jumping us all over the place. We're really setting the stage for what is about to happen. But I really think the most important thing coming out of this whole comic is the destruction. Galactus and the Destroyer mixing together. The Devourer, the Destroyer, becoming the destruction and being a force to be reckoned with. This is why all of the Heralds were called to Galactus. This was not an attempt to revive Galactus so he could devour more worlds. This was an attempt to save everything from the reckoning. To save them all from wrath. The biggest question now lies, what kind of weaponry do they actually have? Having Watcher technology for all of these years, we can only imagine the things that they have created and come up with. And so do they have a weapon that could take down the destruction? Do they have something so powerful that it could destroy that? And if they do, what chance does the entirety of the universe stand against such a force? So let me know your thoughts, let me know your theories, if you have not yet, do me a favor, hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content that we have coming out, and until the next breakdown.